guys and welcome to another video. Now if you guys follow my uh, Facebook group page where I uh, sell gaming PCs and parts then you know that this video was coming and we're going to take a look at the uh, 2690 which is an E5 2690. This is an 8 core 16 thread Xeon which fits on the X79 platform. But before we get into that I just want to say um, sorry that this video is late. I am trying to do one video a week. Um, thanks for all your patience, guys. It's just that a lot of you guys are actually keeping me busy. Uh, if you're buying or putting orders in for PCs, um, I don't mind it, but it, just, it makes these YouTube videos have to take a step back um, so I can deal with all the demand that I'm actually getting. Uh, people buying stuff off me. I appreciate all the support and I do get around to doing these. I actually plan to do this in the morning on the Saturday. It's now 11 o'clock at night and I wanted to get this done for you guys. So like I said, this is the 2690. It's an 8 core, 16 thread Xeon. And you can get these on eBay for around anywhere from 70 to 90 pounds. And honestly, uh, we're testing the 6 core uh, version of the Xeon, which is a 6 core 12 thread, which I bought for 5 pounds, which is still a great CPU. I'm expecting great things out of this, this guy for the £75 I paid. So let's get into it guys. So I'm just going to put the CPU down and show you that the CPU will go in this. So this CPU is going to go in an ASUS Rampage for GNET motherboard. Now straight away guys, I'll just get you guys a better view. Straight away guys, just want to tell you guys, these are stupidly expensive right now to buy. Um, I got a good deal on one of these with a bundle. I took a, a big pallet load of bundle motherboards and this was one of those motherboards. To buy this motherboard on the internet right now, these are going for £200 guys. If you don't believe me, go on eBay right now, put in ASUS Rampage for Gina and you would be gobsmacked. There's a lot better motherboards you can get for £200. Uh, there's a lot more you can actually get uh, for £200. So in this day and age for the X79 platform, I don't recommend spending £200 on this motherboard. If you get a good deal like I did, then this is a great motherboard, but you shouldn't, in 2020, you should not be paying £200 for this motherboard. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do guys is put the CPU in here. And we can all just tell straight away which way we're going to put the CPU in by the little arrow there. So it's telling us that we have to put the CPU there. And with the corresponding one on the CPU, as we've got a little triangle there. If you guys can't see that, little triangle there. I'm not going to time lock these videos, guys. So there's going to be no time lapse here. This is just going to be talking as I'm going. It's a kind of video. So once again, we'll end up, oh there's, an, there's another arrow there on this board, so there's an arrow on the uh, the bracket and there's also an arrow uh, underneath the bracket as well. So you just line that up, like so, and then that pops in. Close it down, and then you clip your retention clips back into place. And there we go. Now the CPU cooler I'm going to put on this, and I do recommend putting in, putting on your coolers first before you actually put the motherboard, the motherboard in the case. Just makes it easier. I've got like this um, huge, huge free pipe copper uh, LGA 2011 cooler, obviously because it's a 2011 board. Um, and all it says on it is, is X Zigma Tech on it, which is a company um, I can't say I've heard of, but this cooler does look pretty darn good. Uh, and I've used this on a 3930K before and it does cool really, really well. So we're going to be using that again in this video, uh, as this CPU is 135 watts. So we have to prepare the CPU bracket. So I've got these 2011 screws, and all we're going to do is screw these in. Like 
like so. Just, you know, it's just so it's tight. It doesn't have to be all the way in, but just enough so it's not loosey as well. Like so. Right, so I do need the other screws that go on top, so I'm gonna get these out of this bag. And I like to do these sort of videos where I don't time lots guys, because it means I can explain more. I mean, there's tons of guys on the, on the internet these days, but uh, if, if you're young or, or even middle-aged or even you know, I don't want, do I dare say the uh, over the hill stage. And you're wanting a game PC, go for it. There is cheap motherboards out there, and cheap CPUs out there, cheap graphics cards that for a first time build, if you do make a mistake, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. And you've got confidence to do a higher end system like, I don't know, the AM4 or the, uh, the Z. Three ninety boards for the ninety nine hundred K, but uh, even then, I wouldn't recommend doing that now if you were going to build one with the uh, new CPUs just around the corner. But that's just an example, though. So what I'm going to do is just put some thermal paste on the CPU. And you just want to put like a, a little blob on. People say P amount, everyone has their own method of doing it. People even um, spread it out. I don't, because once you put the CPU on, it even evens out anyway. Now, this CPU cooler, um, I've had it before where people have put them like this. This is wrong, because eventually when this PC is built, the hot air from your CPU is going to blow onto your GPU. And people have mounted them like this, and that is wrong as well. You want to mount these sort of coolers like this, so that it's at the exhaust of where your, basically where your I/O goes, where you, all your like USB threes are, and that. So you've got an exhaust fan here, and everything's pushing the hot air out of your case, because heat is a killer is here, guys, and you want the heat out of your case. So you want to do this properly, really. So. On this guy goes. <laughs> you can sort of feel the thermal paste <laughs> as you put it on. And then I'm going to take these little thumb screws and just screw this guy in. Like I said, this is a lot easier to do outside of the uh, the case. So I'd because you don't really want to be doing this inside the case, it'd be much harder. Giggada. <laughs> That's what she said. And I'll just drop the screw there, and you don't want to be doing that inside. Okay, so luckily I've got a magnetic screwdriver, so all I'm going to do is quickly get that back. And that's where these come in, in sorry Nanda, because it's magnetic. Um, just talking about things that are selling well right now, the people that are out of my group and watching this video, SSDs are selling really really well right now and I'm definitely cheaper than online. Uh, I've got another batch coming in next week if anyone's interested. Also got a lot of GTX 970s, if anyone wants one of those, send me a message. I'll leave a link in the description below of the uh, designator uh, group where I, I sell gaming PCs and gaming parts. If anyone wants to join that, I'll leave a link in the description below. And this is where you actually want these tight guys, so I'm actually making these tight. Because the better contact you've got with the CPU cooler to the CPU, the better cooling you're going to have.
And that is nearly on. There's this one guy in the corner left. Like I said, these are great coolers, these type of coolers. Um, cooler method is a great one. I think it's a 212, something like that. Uh, not sure I do some great ones where you've got um, three fans where you've got two at the side and one in the middle. I can't remember the exact model name. But they make some great products. But the, the fans are expensive, but you pay for quality these days. And then all I'm going to do is take this CPU fan header. Well, it's you could, you could technically plug this into any motherboard socket. Um, and it would work off any. But the correct way you want to do is just put this into the CPU fan header. Because this controls the speed. And when your CPU temperature rises, you want it to basically do it correctly. So you want this really, to do it right, you want this in the CPU fan header. I'm just saying that um, technically if there are any um, newbies out there building PCs don't put this in any fan header put this in the CPU fan header it's just gonna it, it will work in henna but put it in the CPU fan header I've had so many uh, where I bought bundles of people and uh, I actually got on Facebook marketplace and bought a few uh, bundles myself and I've seen so many people put those headers in the in the peripheral ones and it does work but it's not correct okay so the CPU cooler is now installed and the next thing we want to do guys is put our RAM in now this CPU does support ECC memory, but I have never had a good track record with using ECC memory with Rampage ASUS boards. I don't know if it's just the ECC memory I'm getting, but I've never had, I've, for me, it's never worked on ASUS boards. It does work uh, with, with most boards. I'm not sure if this board is compatible with ECC memory, I think that's the issue. But I have tried this board before with ECC memory and I tried two different types and I could not get it to work. So we're going to use non-ECC memory and these are 4 gigabytes each at 1600 MHz. Um, so which will give us a total of 16 gigabyte. So I'm just going to put these in. And you just, these just click in fairly easy. You line it up and you want to force it in but don't be like mentally forceful with it. You don't want to go through your motherboard. But just hear a click and then that's it, you're in there. Gig it And that is it guys, we have now prepped the motherboard, ready to be put into a case. Uh, I like to always install the RAM, the CPU and the cooler before we put anything in the case, it just makes it easier in the long run. So I have got a fractal design case, which will go lovely with this. It has a damn point because it has like a, a scratch on the side panel. but needs must and it doesn't really affect the point of this video and the factual design cases are pretty darn cool as well so let me just grab that case so here we have the factual design case and this has a CX430 power supply in from the when I bought it off a seller that was selling it uh, which is going to be perfectly fine for this build. The CPU is 135 watts. The GTX 970 we're going to be putting in here is 145 watts. So uh, that's plenty of power for this build. And enough left over for like the extras. So, like I was just want to mention, great case this. I don't think the camera's going to pick that up nicely, but 
There's a few scratches right there, if you, you can see that there. A few scratches there. It's not a big yeah, but um, I'm a bit OCD and I would have liked that not to be there, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's done there. Okay. See, if I were going to build this um, full build, the power supply wouldn't have been there. And there's already a 500 gigabyte hard drive in here. So there's a 500 gigabyte hard drive in here. I can pull that out and show you guys. So Western Digital, black 500 gigabyte. And, you know, it's not a bad drive. Could have been a one terabyte, but I'm not going to mind. So the first thing I want to do before we start putting this in, is I like to do the CPU cable first. Makes it easier, so we're not battling with the, with the cooler. And that's just gone straight in there. I also forgot to mention guys, I've already put the IO shield in. So the IO shield is already in. Just so people don't send me mess going, you didn't put the IO shield in. It's already in there guys, don't worry. <laughs> so make sure I don't crush any cables. Mount that up with that. Line it all up. And then we can start putting screws in. Back in the day when I used to game a lot, guys, this, this, this is sort of story time now as well. I had, I didn't have a lot of money. I was working nights, uh, and a, a chap sold me, at the time, the GTX 1080 Ti were a lot of money. And a chap sold me a GTX 1080 Ti for like under cost. I mean, it's still expensive at the time he paid. I, uh, I think he charged me £400 for it. Um, these days that's what they actually go for, but back in them days, um, that was a good price. Um, and to this day, I mean, I sold it like six months ago. To this day, I still regret it, but I sold it because I don't have time to play games anymore. Um, I work a full-time job, I do this on the side, and a family as well. And it was just sitting there doing nothing, so I thought I was going to get rid of it. It's one of the things, uh... Sad to see it go, but as soon as someone else will get use out of it. But I just, for the for the most time being, these ray tracing cards, I just can't get behind them, guys. Um, for the for how much they cost, and for how much they impact FPS when ray tracing is actually enabled. I need the prices to come down before I even consider putting them into PCs. I would still today, and I'm probably going to get probably a, a lot of hate for this, but to this day I would still so, sooner pay £400 and get a 1080 Ti than spend a thousand, over a £1,000 and get a 2080 Ti, or even more than that if you want the Super. You could even get, I mean SLI is pretty much dead these days, but you could actually get two GTX 1080 Ti and SLI them, um, and if a game actually supports SLI, you pair that against a GTX uh, 2080 Ti Super. I I mean, I'd have to test that to make sure, but I, I'm pretty much convinced FPS wise, because obviously um, the GTX 1080 doesn't have ray tracing. I mean, you can do it through software, but it doesn't have inbuilt ray tracing cores. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure that um, it would come out above an FPS. And you've only spent £800 there, guys. So you've got £200 left over. And for me, it's all about FPS. I mean, ray tracing is nice, I've seen it. Reflections are nice. It is the next way forward for gaming. But the, that comes with a high premium 
which a lot of people like myself aren't going to pay. For many people that don't know, I started building PCs a really long time ago. My dad gave me a, a really, really, I think it was an e-machine. Uh, and that thing, I'm sure I have had XP or Windows 98 on it. And I broke that thing a lot. I had no knowledge about PCs back in the day. I broke that thing a lot because I was more bothered about how it worked than than using it. And I really do recommend guys, if any of you guys are actually interested in doing PCs, but um, are nervous about it, when you break something, it gives you more determination how to figure out how to either fix it, but if it's beyond repair, it makes you more determined to get it right the next time. And I can honestly say, <laughs> uh, in the last five years, I've never broke anything by doing something stupid. So if you any of you guys want to comment down below what you're actually using right now for gaming, I'd be interested to know. Uh, you can also send pictures of your gaming rigs to the, uh, if you go onto the Facebook group where I sell stuff and go onto admins, send me or Leanne, my partner, your builds, I'd, I'd, I'd look at them guys, I'm definitely uninterested. <coughs> Maybe we do a water cool and build soon. I could do a, a water cool build. This one's a little bit hard to get to because it's behind the, behind the CPU cool, but we've got it. There we go. And that is the motherboard in. So we've already got the CPU power in, I'm now going to attach the motherboard power cable, which is the 24 pin, it'll go in, <laughs> sometimes these are a little tricky. There we go. Jobs are good then. The USB 3.0 that goes in there. All good. <sighs> the hard drive. And, oh, I'm gone. So that's. The CD drive, I need to make one extra for the SSD we're going to put in here because it doesn't have a SSD. May as well do the F panel wire here. And this is when I first started building PCs, this is where what I found most daunting. Where I put these little guys for the power on and whatnot. And on most motherboards, if it doesn't have it on, it'll say it in the manual. On this motherboard, it also tells you where to put them. So I'm just going to quickly do that.
the power one, there we go. And oh, the power one just came out. Didn't want to just didn't want to stay in there. Get a little devil. And the reset. And there we go. We've now successfully installed the F panel connectors. This cable, which is the PCIe power, we're going to need that later. But while we're also here as well, we can install the HD audio. Now there's a pin missing, and you can easily line this up with the, the one on the motherboard. That just goes straight in there as well. And we're nearly done now, guys. Right, so what I need to do now is take one of these out. Because it has placements for the SSD and my screw box is a mess so just give me a sec guys <laughs> there we go that's two three four all right and the SSD we're going to put in today guys is a Samsung 120, 128 gigabyte. So that just lines up on this caddy light. So then what I like to do before we screw it in is just get one in, turn it with your fingers just so it's. Then I do one on the opposite side, this side, and then once you do that, they all line up, and you can screw it in pretty easy. Then I'll screw these in fuller and it makes the other then the other two screws so easy to do and I've had much success doing it this way. And there we have it. So that's now on there tight. Then we just put this back in. And then we have to turn the case over now so we can put the power to the drives. But what I'm going to do first is just remove the thumb screws holding in the, the back panel. But all you guys actually come and buy stuff off me. Um, if it's not, sometimes people don't actually buy anything, they just come around for a talk. Um, I could talk for hours about PC guys. I'm one of them people where people have to tell me to shut up because they have enough. <laughs> So uh, let's do the SSD. Why is that actually coming out a bit more? Uh, I think that's been put in incorrect. Oh no, no it'll work. See, because that didn't line up with that, I thought we would have to knock it down. This hard drive, the screws, obviously the, the guy before me sold it me at. Uh, you can actually knock it down. If you can see, I can see the screws where you can actually take that down one. I didn't think the actual the SSD power, <laughs> SSD power, the SATA power, we're going to reach, but it did, so it's fine.
So we connect the SATA free cable there. And this is the one that we're, that we're adding. Right. We'll put that one there. Because this one has like an L bend on it. So I'll put that one there. And then we need to feed that back in. So we can put that back in. So we can put that in later. Oh, you've actually, there's actually another space here, guys, to put another, another SSD here. So you can actually mount a lot of SSDs to this case. Which is nice to see. Putting on, putting on the wrong, putting on the front panel is the back there. And that's it, we're done at the back. Oh, sorry if my voice is a bit buggy guys, I've got cold or something coming I think. set a cable in and that's the SSD connected now you're probably thinking hang on a minute hang on a minute does the GTX 970s or well, most of them have uh, two six pin connectors to power them and the Corsair CX430 only has one eight pin yeah, did you listen to how I said most of them? The Strix GTX 970 only requires an eight an eight pin connector. Eight pin. So this is going to do fine for this task, which is why I picked this GPU for this uh, this video and this PC. And that just goes in like so. And all we need to do now is screw in our graphics card and we are done. We are going to be doing a little bit of an overclock on the GTX 970. I am going to do a slight overclock on the 2690. Um, the core ratio is locked. It's not. It's not an unlocked processor. But what we can do is change the B, the BCLK, from 100 megahertz to 105 megahertz, which will give us a very, very, very slight overclock. But it's better than nothing. And there we have it guys. So this is now complete. We put the front side panel back on. And you see my awesome face. <laughs> um. So that's a build part of it done guys. I'm going to do this in t this video in two parts. This is part one. Uh, the next video is going to be at the desk. Um, we're going to be testing this thing. Um, so I want to know your opinion guys. You do, do you prefer where I do everything in one video? Where I do the time lapse then do the games at the end? 
or would you prefer to do if I did slower videos like this where I talk about why I'm doing it uh, talk to you guys about you know anything that comes to mind really anything that's <laughs> that's tech related um, but obviously the, the videos would the, then come in two parts the, the build part and the, the performance part so yeah let me know let me guys let me oh I can't get my words out let me know guys uh, if you prefer the time lapse where everything's done in one video or you prefer it where I go slower uh, slower and yeah that's pretty much gonna wrap up the video if you like the video subscribe feel free to share I'll post a link down below for the uh, designator group and I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll test this thing first test drive